Hello Year 6 and welcome to our third lesson on why shadows are important today. Um, we are going to be having a bit of a hands-on lesson and making some sculptures. Before I get into that, I just wanted a quick reminder to you all that we have um, sent out an order regarding hoodies, a leavers hoodies, and that um, we, if you would like one, then you can place an order via the School Gateway app. Um, lots of you have already done that, so well done. And also just a quick reminder as well that we have got a Padlet up and running for you guys to be able to communicate to each other. This is what it is looking like at the moment. Lots and lots and lots and lots of comments on there, so it's really great. We do have another one as well um, for parents as well if they want to contact us and say anything or get in contact with us that way. Okay, so moving on to our inquiry. So this term we are looking at uh, why are shadows important? So this is term five, it's week four, although it's week eight of lockdown. And today we're going to be scientists and artists and our Walt is we are learning to understand how shadows can make a more realistic piece of artwork. So we're going to be looking at uh, this lady today. Her ma name was Maud Lewis and uh, she was born in 1901 and she lived until 1970. She was born, her parents were John and Agnes Dowley in Yarmouth in Nova Scotia. As a child, Maud spent most of her time alone, mostly because she felt uncomfortable at her differences around the other children. She had been born with almost no chin and was always much smaller than everyone else. Maud was a happy child who enjoyed the time she spent with her parents and brother and Maud's mother started her painting, Christmas cards to sell, thus her career as an artist began. Now Maud Lewis created beautiful pictures like you can see to the one on the left. Um, and of the cat and the blossom and the tulips um, and she's created some artwork which is titled A World Without Shadows. So I just wanted to share, you, share with you some of those um, paintings and pieces of artwork so that you could have a look at what artwork would look like if we didn't have any shadows. So here are a couple of her first pieces. Hers are a little bit more unrealistic, a bit more abstract art. Um, it's quite a common theme of animals and horses amongst her work. So as you can quite clearly see, there are no shadows around any of the objects on these paintings. I don't know what your thoughts are on that, but it does make it look a little bit different, doesn't it? And here are some more images of with no shadows. It'd be quite interesting if we were at school to print some of those out and to have a go adding in the shadows and see what kind of difference it makes. Okay, and then we have got some artists here who do use shadows in their work. So the first one here, the um, colourful one with the purple flowers, is written is um, painted by Claude Monet, and it's called Garden Path at Giverny. And you can see there quite clearly the shadows that have been created by this tree hanging over on the pathway. And again, in this one here by PJ Cook, the beach path shadows, you can see here the shadow of the small child or the woman at the end. And you can also see the shadow that's been created on the path down to the beach. Now, adding shadows to our work um, makes it a lot more realistic. It gives an effect of a bit of depth and uh, like the objects are really there. So today I want you to make an aluminium foil man which you can manipulate and then I'm going to have an activity for you to do after that. So you can all, I just want to do a quick reminder that you can always pause me um, and catch up. So I'm going to play a little video now of how I would like you to make the aluminium foil man or lady or person or child. And um, you you can be as creative as you like. Once you know how to make an aluminium man, you could always make an aluminium animal as well. And different objects, maybe trees and have a, just a general play around. OK, so.
Okay, so there was your little video of how to make a aluminium man, a foil man, a kitchen foil it's also known as, if you're wondering what I'm talking about. Um, it made me think of what we were discussing in our year six catch up at the end of that video when I watched it before and how the um, creator had used stop motion um, to create, make the image, do a little bit of walking across. So after you've done your um, bin artist with it, you could always have a go at creating your stop motion with your uh, aluminium foil men as well, or women if you would like to as well. Okay, so once you've created your, your foil men I, or women, I would just say that the legs need to be quite um, strong. So don't, don't squish them really hard. They need to, you need to be able to get your figure to stand up right. So you might need to add a little bit more tin foil around the edge to, of your um, foil person. So just remember that the, the outcome is, I want, is really important that your foil man or lady can stand upright. So once you have done that, I would like for you to have a go at create m uh, manipulating your figure into a shape and then creating the shadow for that shape. So what you could do at this point is once you have made your aluminium person stand up, take it him outside, take her outside, have a look at what effect the sun has on your aluminium figure, where is the shadow? And you could always trace around it like we did last week with our shadow artwork with the animals. You could have a go at doing that or bring your object back inside and have a go at creating the shadow on a piece of paper or piece of card for your aluminium person. And you should be able to get some effects like these. You could make more than one person. You could have two or three. You could make a family of people. You could have them doing different activities. I saw um, somebody had had a go at making an aluminium family in a park and some of them were playing on a swing. So you could be as adventurous as you would like. So long as we are thinking about the how shadows are making our objects look more realistic. Okay, so you hopefully, ha after having done that activity, should understand that how um, using shadows in our artwork is really important if we want to achieve a realistic piece of work. However, we're all, if we're all going to be artists, everyone has different styles, just like Maud Lewis. So if you wanted to, depending on what effect you wanted to achieve, you could also leave those shadows out. Okay, so I hope that you have a great time making your aluminium people and creating some shadow art to go with them. Um, as always, we would love to see your work. So take some photos, email them to us. We want, we want to see what you have been doing and how these turn out. Um, so just one last little thing from Mrs. Curly, Mrs. Lloyd and myself. We want to say stay safe and that we hope to see you soon. And a reminder that if you haven't ordered your Leavers hoodies and that you would like to order your Leavers hoodies, the deadline is at the end of the week. So get a move on. We'll see you soon. Take care. Bye.